The surgery that's done for these kids typically involves going in and correcting some sort of problem with the urinary drainage. So you can think of this as plumbing, essentially. Some babies have a blocked or obstructed kidney, and so we have to go in and correct the obstruction. That might include an obstruction at one of several different levels in the urinary system, anywhere from the kidney all the way down to the urethra where the urine drains out of. So the exact procedure that is done depends on exactly what the problem with the plumbing might be. It's actually pretty uncommon for us to do surgery in infants for these kind of problems. That does happen, and there are a few infants who need something done relatively early, but by far, most of these kids are followed for some period of at least months and often years before we need to go in and do any kind of surgical procedure. Robotic and minimally invasive surgery refers to some tools that we now have which allow us to do the operation through very small incisions. The operations that we're doing are actually the same operations we've been doing for some of these problems for decades. For instance, if you have an obstructed kidney, we have to go in, we locate the point of the obstruction, we typically remove that section where the obstruction is happening, and then we just sew the ends back together. And people have been doing that operation through a, a big incision since the early 20th century. What we've been able to do now with these new tools is we can do that same procedure through very small incisions using these high-tech machines which allow us to recreate the motion of human hands on the inside of the patient, even though we can't physically put our hands into the patient because the incisions are too small. So these newer techniques, such as the robotic-assisted surgery, allow us to do very delicate reconstructive work reassembling and sewing and doing all sorts of amazing things, even though we can't put our hands in there. But the operation itself is pretty much the same as the operation has always been done. The great news though with this is that because those incisions are so small, and because we're not having the patient sort of opened up in a very unnatural way for long periods of time, it allows recovery to be very, very rapid. Nowadays, with the small incisions, most of these kids go home the next day. And the level of pain and the level of limited activity is just much, much less than it once was through the bigger open incisions. For a lot of these kids, we just see them periodically with additional imaging, almost always an ultrasound. And I would say that the most typical pattern is we, we see them every six months or so, and that might go on for the first two or three years of life. And if things remain stable, or if they continue to improve, we might start to stretch that out. We might see them every year or even every couple of years. In many cases, the hydronephrosis that we're watching just goes away, it resolves. There's nothing left to see, the kidneys look normal, and in those cases, we're done. We don't need to keep seeing them. For some kids, especially early in infancy, if they're having a more severe problem, we might need to see them more often. After these problems are fixed, for the few that need some kind of surgery, those kids often have follow-up every year or two for some period of time, and then if things are looking good and they're doing well, we might decide that they can just follow up with their pediatrician.